Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to my 10th and final card video for my capsule paper crafting challenge for the month of February 2020. This was a really fun card to end the challenge on and I'm starting out with the Friendship Blooms stamp set from Gina K and I'm going to be stamping this and watercoloring it today and I tried to think of a different way to use this stamp set, something a little bit unexpected but also very colorful, and this is the idea that I came up with. So I cut down some watercolor paper so that it's a little bit bigger than an A2 card. In fact, it's cut to, um, I guess, just four and three quarters by six inches tall, and I'm going to uh, ink up that really large floral stamp in some Onyx Black VersaFine ink. And I actually stamped this a few times trying to get a really good impression and then I was left with this. I taped it down to a board and I'm going to do some kind of special masking off and taping on this card because I want to have different areas of color. So I'm going to do it sort of in a rainbow fashion. However, I'm going to be masking off different sections. So the areas that I have masked off right now are that first one on the left and the one in the middle. I'm going to be coloring those first. I'm using my watercolor set that I've used for the month. This is the paper fashion watercolor set from American Crafts. This first section is going to have red and orange flowers with a red background. So I'm having the first section be red and orange and then it's going to transition into the next section of orange and yellow. The following section will be yellow green and then green blue and then blue purple. So if you kind of see the rainbow kind of pattern there. So I'm starting out with some yellow on these other flowers, adding a little bit of red in so that they mix and create a nice orange shade. Zooming in so you can see the painting a little bit better. So I have sped up the video. It's uh, four times faster than normal, but this was actually very quick um, in comparison to some other watercolor that I've done, maybe much more detailed, where you're spending more time on each petal and being very meticulous. This was kind of a really messy watercoloring style, and it worked out really well. So after I had most of this section completely painted, I'm going to move on to another section, and I'm going to be mixing up some green, because there isn't a really nice vibrant green in the watercolor palette, so you do have to mix a few shades together. So I use like that really golden yellow, and then also more of that aqua blue shade that gives a nice kind of leaf green color. So this section is actually going to be the green to blue. So I'm starting out by painting the flowers more of that green shade, just giving it a nice wash of color. And then I'm grabbing um, the darker blue shade in the palette. It's more almost like a Payne's gray blue. And I'm adding that to the darker areas on the flower. And I just want to have this blue shade kind of coming in. So I'm first dropping in that dark blue shade and then washing off my brush in some clean water and coming back and just pulling that color and spreading it out more across the petals. Did the same thing on the leaves using those same two colors. So now I'm going to start uh, figuring out the colors I'm going to have and the background um, on these flowers. I thought it would be good to have a solid color on the background so that it really um, tells the viewer that there is a very stark line, a transition of color in between all these different panels. So I put a nice red on the background for this first section. And then for the second section, um, I wanted to bring in more of that aqua blue shade just because um, I really like that shade and I didn't want to do the dark blue. I thought it would be just a little bit too dark for this particular area on the card. So I used the straight aqua blue shade from the palette just to have a nice difference in color. And after I painted all those areas in between all of the flowers, I'm going to go ahead and make sure both of these sections are completely dry before I remove the masking tape separating them from the sections around it. And I want to make sure it's completely dry so that I don't pull up any paper or have some color seep under the tape. So you can see these nice stripes of color that look really uh, crisp. And now I'm going to put down some new pieces of tape. 
to uh, mask off those other areas. So now I'm ready to paint the final two sections. This first section is going to be yellow to green. So I'm putting down just a nice wash of yellow on the flowers. And then I'm going to come in with that same green shade that I used on the previous section. And I'm just using that, dropping it in. And like I did with the dark blue color, I first put the full strength color down in the dark sections and then come in with a clean paintbrush to kind of spread out that color. So I'm just dropping in all of those colors. I'm going to use um, a little bit of a different mixture for the leaves. I just added some of that darker blue shade to that green that I was already using. And that gives me just a deeper green tone to use for those leaves. For this section, I thought I would use kind of that yellow ochre shade that's on the palette, um, just filling in all of those gaps. For this final section, I'm going to have it be purple and blue. So I'm first going to mix, um, I'm going to put down this blue shade. It's that same kind of aqua blue color that I use on the background. And then I'm going to use the purple color from the palette for the darker areas. So just like I did on the previous sections, I'm adding the color to where it would be darkest and then using a clean a brush to spread out the color. For the leaves, I did the exact same thing, starting with that wash of blue and then coming in with that purple shade. Now for the background on this section, I didn't want to use that same purple because I wanted it to stand out from the flowers and leaves. So I actually mixed a different purple shade. I used the regular purple from the palette and then I put a little bit of red into it. So it's more of a red violet shade because it's just a little bit of uh, differentiation in color. So I painted this entire background and this was a really large section for such a flat color but it does help the section stand out. And I think it looks really nice to have this red violet shade in comparison to more of that uh, blue toned violet on the flowers and leaves. After I painted this entire section, I then used my heat tool to speed up the drying process. Um, that just gives it, um, it doesn't take as long to dry. And I am quite impatient when I'm painting and I wanna keep moving on to the different sections. So when I went to remove the tape on this, um, some of the color seeped underneath. And I think it's because I forgot to really run my fingertips over that section, um, both of these right here, before I started painting. So there was some color seepage underneath both of these, but on this first section, I did remember to really press down the tape and there was no bleeding or seeping of color underneath the tape. It worked out so well and it had a really nice line. For some of these other sections where it sort of um, bled into it, I did try to do a little bit of cleanup and it helped a little bit. For the greeting on the card, since the background is quite busy with all that color shifting, I thought it would be nice to use a very simple greeting from the Greetings Mix 1 stamp set. So it's this very simple thank you with a border around it. And I'm going to stamp it in Versamark ink and then use white embossing powder over the top. So after I stamped it, I sprinkled on some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, tapped it off, and I did have a little bit of embossing powder sticking to some areas, so I used a dry, clean paintbrush to sweep away any of that stray embossing powder. Then used my heat tool to heat set this until the powder was smooth and melted. I also took my scissors and trimmed this out, leaving a little bit of a black border around the outer edge. I then took my watercolor piece and trimmed it down so that it's slightly smaller than an A2 card. So it ended up being four inches wide by five and one quarter tall. I'm going to be creating a top folding card. So I've scored it at five and a half. And then I put some foam adhesive on the back of my watercolor panel and pressed it down onto the front of my card base. So initially when I first started this card, I thought it would be a landscape card, but then I decided that this greeting looked even better um, on a vertical card and have it intersect um, one of the lines. My last thing that I did to this card just to finish it off was to add a white border around the outer edge using a ruler and a jelly roll pen. This is a number 10 bold jelly roll pen. And I just very lightly went around the outer edge 
adding this white line. And I went very slowly and kind of back and forth to make sure I got a nice, uh, really complete stark white line. So that is the finished card for today and also for this month long challenge. I really enjoyed this challenge. It really stretched my creative muscles. I'm going to do a recap um, in my next video, just giving you my thoughts on this particular challenge. So watch for that very, very soon. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.